Welcome back to Movies with McLean. I'm Andrew McLean, and this is my weekly movie podcast. And today with me are uh, two great guests, Griffin Burris. What's up, guys? I'm glad to have you, Griffin. Uh, you're a very frequent guest, and uh, <laughs> I'm sure the uh, viewers have gotten used to having you on here. Glad to be here. And Eric Thomas, it's been a while. How are you doing? It has been a long time. Too long, McLean. I'm doing real good. I'm glad to have you as well. And uh, today we have a great show. We will be reviewing Rogue One. And yes, we are talking spoilers. So if you haven't yet seen Rogue One, watch the movie first. But uh, you can watch the first like 10 minutes of this video because we will get to uh, another discussion about uh, the movie news before we talk about Rogue One. So stick around, and then we'll throw up a spoiler alert when we get to that point, and that's when you can leave us and come back after you've seen the movie. So our first topic of discussion today is the Netflix rundown. Uh, we do this at, on the last show of every month, and since this is the last show of the year for us, uh, we will be talking about the movies that are leaving Netflix on January 1st. So leaving Netflix on January 1st is Saving Private Ryan, The Fast and the Furious, the first one, and the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. So, uh, which of these movies uh, really stands out to you guys? Which one like sucks the most as leaving? Definitely Saving Private yeah. Ryan, which yeah. I think we all can agree on. Yeah, that's that what I was going to say the same thing. In my opinion, it's the best war movie of all time, so I'm bummed to see it leave. Uh, Fast and the Furious, I can take it or leave it. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I mean, uh, Saving Private Ryan was uh, is my first rated R movie I ever watched, you know, back in the day. So it has a special place uh, for me. I'm definitely bummed most about that one. Like Griff said, I don't know, Fast and Furious, it's a classic. But, I mean, once I've, I've already seen it like two, three times, so... They're all the same. Yeah, it's all the same. Yeah, um, I mean, the Fast and the Furious movies, you're right, like, they kind of blend together. At least the early ones do. Yeah. I think uh, some of the new, more recent ones are are better. But, um, yeah, the first one's kind of just point break with cars, so it's a fun watch. But Saving Private Ryan's obviously the, the one that's gonna, that we're going to miss the most. It's only been on there since, like, I think September. So yeah, it wasn't on kind of a, Yeah, it's kind of a shame that they're taking it off already. But definitely, uh, if you get a chance, I'd recommend watching Saving Private Ryan as many <laughs> times as you can before it goes off because... It will no longer be available after January 1st. Uh, anything else on any of these movies? I think that's it. Hopefully, Saving Private Ryan goes to HBO, but keep our yeah. fingers crossed for that one. Yeah, hopefully. Actually, I actually haven't even seen Tokyo Drift. It's one of the few of those I haven't seen. Really? Is that, that's the second one, right? That's the third, third one. Oh, yeah. third. Yeah. Okay. It's one with like none of the same characters. Yeah. yeah. All right, so on to the movie news. Uh, today we're just talking about the trailers that have come out in the past week. And the trailers that came out are Dunkirk, the uh, first full trailer for Dunkirk, the first teaser for Blade Runner 2049, and the international trailer for John Wick Chapter 2. So which of these trailers uh, really stood out to you guys? Which one got you most excited for the movie? Ooh, I'd say Dunkirk. Really? Uh, I think mine would be uh, John Wick Chapter 2. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> I, don't, I mean, honestly, just Dunkirk, the trailer just didn't really do it for me. Really? Yeah. What about the teaser? You like the teaser better? The teaser for, uh, Dunkirk. for Dunkirk. For Dunkirk? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'll definitely go see it when it comes out, but I don't know how I feel I mean, about it right now. It's a Nolan movie, so like... Yeah, you know I mean, so it has be, to be good. That's how I know it's going to be good. The teaser definitely caught my, caught my attention out of... All the three movies we're talking about, I guess. I mean, I'm definitely excited for it. Yeah. I think it's just because all the war movies have been coming out, like, recently. It's kind of, like, less hype. But, like, I think it'll be a good one. Yeah, every great director, like, has a war movie, like, for yeah. the most part. And, like, this is going to be yeah, Christopher it's, Nolan's movie. I think movie. he'll do it right. Yeah, I, I hope it's, I hope it's going to be great. I think um, they've got, like, great uh, talent in there with, like, Kenneth Branagh yeah. and Killian Murphy, but then also like Harry Styles for some reason. I don't really know where that came from. He's like the oh, in yeah. like a band or something. Mm -hmm. So I I don't think he's ever acted before, but hopefully hopefully uh, <laughs> no one can get hopefully a good performance out of him. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I thought it was a good trailer. It wasn't like it wasn't like awesome or like get me like way more excited than I already was, but it just uh, sort of confirmed for me that it's going to be good. Yeah. And, I am, it didn't let I me am down. Really excited for it. Yeah, I didn't yeah, like one yeah, too exactly. much. 
Because, I don't know, trailers literally just give too much away. So, like, I was just fine yeah. with it, you know. I mean, yeah. I, I just think it didn't really, like, blow me away. But, I mean, I'm excited to see the, the final product when the movie comes out. Yeah. And so, uh, what what do you like so much about the John Wick trailer? Yeah, tell us. I mean, out of those three, it got me most excited. I mean, John Wick is just a good action movie. And, uh, I mean, from just what we've seen in that trailer... It's going to have some good scenes in it. I mean, that one scene where he said, you don't even know what's coming, and then all the people in the plaza just stop and look at him. Yeah. I was really like, oh. like I like said it out loud. Like I thought that was cool. Um, so I guess just out of the three trailers, that one impressed me the most. Coming from someone who, like, I haven't seen the first one, but I don't know, that movie just kind of looks like garbage to me. <laughs> I think it's just because, like, I'm already not a fan of, like, recent action movies just because they're all kind of the same to me, you know? But this movie just looks like, I don't know, it's like any other action movie, you know? Mm. But I don't know. I feel like uh, Keanu Reeves, while he's not the best actor, he's, like, great for, like, carrying an action movie because mm-hmm. he's got, like, good... He's got, like, charisma, and he's, like, a likable bad actor, I guess. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, I thought there were some pretty awesome scenes in that trailer... It was a little silly, but uh, I think uh, I think it'll still be entertaining. So I'm looking forward to that one. I thought it was a pretty good trailer. And what about uh, Blade Runner 2049? I have not seen the first Blade Runner, but I know what it's about, and I definitely need to see it. And seeing this one just gets me more hyped to watch the first one, and I definitely am looking forward to this movie because Harrison Ford is one of my favorite actors. Yeah. So I'm I need to watch the first one, but I'm definitely looking forward to this movie. It just it looks awesome. And I know that these movies are kind of, like, mind-bending, so I don't know, I'm looking forward to it. Get yeah. Right here. What about you guys? Definitely, uh, definitely intrigued me to, for this movie. I also haven't seen the uh, first one, so after watching that trailer, I'm definitely going to go home, yeah. watch the first one. I mean, it got me excited for this one. And it's a Ridley Scott movie. Well, I don't think this one isn't, but he's producing it. Yeah. Um, I also haven't seen Blade Runner. It's kind of embarrassing that none of us have seen it, but um, I, I think... Uh, It'll, I think it'll be great. I mean, we saw The Force Awakens where it was, like, the new cast and then Harrison Ford sort of, like, being like being there um, yeah, right. to, like, not take over but still, like, mm-hmm. give you, like, the nostalgia of the first one but not, like, beating you over the head with it. And yeah. I think this will do the same thing. I think there'll be the right amount of Harrison Ford in this but then still let Ryan Gosling take the lead. And it's directed by Dennis Villanueva um, who made, like, Arrival and Prisoners, so he's a great director. I think he can handle this, um, and it's got the same writer as the first one. So I love uh, yeah. Arrival, so I think he'll do this justice. Yeah, so. I think they got the right guys working oh, on yeah. it, and um, it it looks pretty cool from the first teaser trailer, and I'm sure we'll see a lot more because um, the movie's still pretty far away. Yeah. So that's all we have for the movie news. Uh, We are going to start talking about Rogue One, and before we get into the spoilers, uh, we're just going to do, like, overall thoughts first um, for the viewers who haven't seen the movie yet. Um, So anything quick you guys want to say, non-spoilers, just for the viewers that haven't seen it yet, um, before we get into the spoiler discussion. All right, definitely go see it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I would say it's... It's kind of different from other Star Wars movies. It's more of like a, I had to describe like a war Star Wars movie. Yeah. Kind of like a Saving Private Ryan, but Star Wars. I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely like a good uh, supplement to the Star Wars movies. Is how I kind of been describing it. Um, I mean, it's just I mean by itself, if you just took all the Star Wars like nostalgia factors out of it, it's it still, still would have been no, a good still movie. a great movie. Yeah. And then slapped on with that Star Wars uh, yeah. brand and all the trademark things that we know and love. I mean, it's just it's really good. Even if you haven't seen any of the movies, I still think like someone who has not seen Star Wars would enjoy it because like overall, it's still like mm-hmm. a good movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people who are like unsure about it. Like they think like uh, they don't have to see this movie. Like I understand that like it, it's not going to be essential to yeah. see this. But, like, you want to see this. Like, it's a very good movie. It's got, a, like, great war scenes. And I think anyone can love it, like, whether you're a Star Wars fan or not. So, and if you are, you're like, you'll definitely love it. Oh, right? yeah, and for sure. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we are going to get into the spoilers now. So we'll put up a warning on the screen, and that'll stay on for the rest of the show. So um, well, I have to do that later. 
<laughs> so, uh, spoilers are fair game now. So, the first question I have for you guys is, what did you think about the pacing of the movie? Uh, some people have said that the first two acts were kind of slow, but uh, did they feel slow to you, and did it pay off in the third act? In my opinion, I thought it was paced out well, because we didn't know any of these characters, and I kind of like movies, if we don't really know the characters or are unsure about them, I like them to be slow at first, so I can kind of get to know the character. Um, I don't really care if a movie's slow, as long as it's like good writing still, I'm okay with it. So I thought it was fine, but throughout the movie, I thought the pacing was pretty nice. Yeah. And I, even in the end, you know. I mean, yeah. yeah, I'd have to agree, definitely. I think um, they introduced the characters, and it was organic. It wasn't like Suicide Squad, where they're yeah. just like, character introduction, yeah. character introduction, yeah. character uh, introduction. That was awful. This is not that at all. You're getting, there's six of the main characters on the, on like the main team, and then some of the side characters, and... They all of their too. Yeah, yeah, all of them do, and all of their introductions are are solid. And uh, I think another thing that they did that I liked was with the um, like how they put like the words on the screen, like when you were going to a new like planet that we yeah, hadn't been to. Cool. Uh, that's something they hadn't done yet, and I thought that that um, kind of helped like establish some of the new worlds and increase the world building mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. Star Wars galaxy. What do yeah, you think right. of the pacing here? Um, I mean, I could, I guess I could see where people are coming from, coming from with it, uh, being slow, but, I mean, I enjoyed the whole movie, and I thought it was definitely, it definitely paid off, because, I mean, since we are talking spoilers now, uh, I mean, pretty much all the characters die at the end. Yeah, and, which we, I kind of knew that was coming, too. Yeah, so, I mean, and I mean, know, like, yeah. without that introduction, like you guys are saying, like, uh, putting in all these new characters, like, those deaths at the end would have meant nothing. I would have yeah. been like, I don't care, yeah. you know what I mean, so... I think it was definitely necessary to do, and it definitely paid off at the end. Yeah, I definitely agree that um, they set the characters up well, so the the deaths were meaningful. And did you think like all of the deaths were satisfying, like the way yes. that like they had every one of them? Yeah, at least the main the main characters. Yeah, the, the main like, six. Yeah, I enjoyed how like I knew these characters were going to die because we know basically that they did because we know that like a lot even in like episode four they said a lot of people died to get these plans. Yeah, so, like we were kind of knew it was coming, and like. Their deaths were still like a shock to me in the movie, which yeah. I really enjoyed. Like I, I still like it was still meaningful. I kind of thought like when Cassian fell that like he wasn't dead because like it just showed him fall down on the like yeah. on the other. I knew that they were gonna make his like if he was gonna die they'd have to they'd show it. Yeah, um, and I thought uh, the K two S O when he went down I thought that was like the most like payoff mm -hmm. um, because like they established his character. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was like a great scene where he was like defending them at the end as they tried to send the plans, and yeah. he killed like good. a lot of storm. <laughs> yeah, that, that was died, cool. So yeah. That was pretty awesome. And then also um, with uh, Bodhi Rook, I thought his death was satisfying. It seemed like for all all six of them, right after they had accomplished like their task, they died. They died. They died. So it, was he the uh, off. the Jedi Temple Guardian? No, that was that was a uh, cheer at M way. Okay, yeah, that, uh, was, he, that was that really was by awesome far my too. favorite. That was the most satisfying death in the movie. Yeah. That was so awesome. He was just like walking through, and bullets were flying everywhere. <laughs> He's blind, so I mean. Yeah, and then I thought that um, it was a great moment when like his buddy cheer it, who sort of hadn't like mm -hmm. been a big believer in the force, then went out in epic fashion and yeah, I think that one was my favorite. That, yeah. was, that was cool. Uh, yeah, that was awesome. All right, so on to the next topic. Uh, do we think that Rogue One is a war movie, or is it a space fantasy just with war like scenes, just with war mixed in? What do we think? Second option for sure. Okay. I don't think they were going like, I mean, they were definitely going for good war scenes, but they they weren't going for a war movie. Because Star Wars is always like sci-fi space fantasy, and I think they added in like a good war theme to the movie yeah i think like the last like 30 minutes was kind of just like all war and mm -hmm. I, I think that that was awesome because all like all of those scenes were incredibly shot but uh yeah i it's sort of a different kind of war movie because there's like <coughs> the scene in jetta uh sort of the the warfare within the city i thought yeah. was uh interesting um sort of sort of like a modern war there mm -hmm. um so i think I think, yeah, it's still like a Star Wars movie, but um, 
More more of a war movie than any Star Wars movie we've seen so far. What do you think, Eric? Uh, I would agree with you. Yeah, I mean, it's still a Star Wars movie. Um, I didn't really get, like, I didn't walk out of there thinking, like, oh, that was a war movie yeah. I just saw with lasers. But, um, I mean, again, if you did kind of strip it all away and, like, um, you know, you replace it with real guns now, I guess you could kind of argue that it would be a war movie. I mean... I, I like it, so I think it I think it was fine. And like you said, like when they were in Jeddah, it was like really modern. It gave almost like a like an Afghanistan kind of vibe. Yeah. And then once they got to um, Scarif, Scarif, yeah, it was more Star Wars. Like when that my favorite part is when the Adat, like the smoke started to clear and you just see mm. the Adat start walking out. That was awesome. Yeah. I think uh, I also really liked the uh, the scene on I think it's Edu was the planet where they mined the. Um, they mined the Kyber crystals where Jin's father was. Yeah. I thought yeah. like that that was that was a Star Wars like scene. That wasn't mm -hmm. really a war scene when all mm -hmm. the X Wings came in, but yeah. that was that was pretty awesome too. Um so yeah, we're all in agreement, I guess. It's still a space fantasy, but with a lot of war in in the middle of that. So, uh thoughts on the space battle. What do we think of that? Yeah. I mean, I thought <laughs> I thought it was awesome. I mean, a Star Wars space battle. You see the, all those uh, X wings coming in. You see, you know, everyone's flying around. I mean, it's pretty much what we had in like the old movies, but with this new CGI and you know mm -hmm. better look to it. So I mean, it's everything that we could ask for, pretty much, in my opinion. I like yeah. how they still had the um, the standing by scene when they were all in like the cockpits of the planes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was awesome. On Yavin. That was awesome how that, they added that in there. That scene, like, I thought they, like, made me feel the most like I was watching like the original trilogy. Like yeah, I that felt was like, awesome. we, like we're back to Star Wars when I saw that. They kinda scene. gave like a nod to it still, which is still awesome. Yeah. Um Yeah, I thought it was great. Um I like uh how they had the like the gate that they had to destroy. And then the way they eventually destroyed that by bringing the that Star awesome. Destroyer down into oh, it. That so yeah, that was really cool. And that was incredible. And uh, we didn't get a space battle, like a real space battle in The Force Awakens. So I think it was mm -hmm. great to have uh, one on this big of a scale in uh, Rogue One. And then I know you were going to talk about, I think, uh, what happened at the end of that space battle. Oh, yeah. I, I was always wondering, too, because in the trilogy, all the ships were always going into hyperspace. And I'm like, when they come out or when they go in, how do they not possibly hit something? Yeah. Like, that's just impossible. And they finally, like, they finally just explained in this movie when all the rebels were trying to leave, Vader's ship just appeared out of nowhere from yeah. hyperspace and just smacked into all of them, <laughs> which is probably one of my favorite scenes. Yeah, it was awesome. Because, like, you think, well, they have the plans, so that's all they need to show. Mm -hmm. And you think, the movie's probably about to be over. They're going into hyperspace. Nope. There's Vader. Yeah, he just he smacks, smacks into, him. into him. And then, uh, now let's talk about what comes right after that, because this was maybe one of the most badass oh scenes. My God. Oh, the most man. badass in any oh, Star man. Wars movie. Let's talk about Vader. Uh, oh. I think we're all in agreement that that was, like, one of our favorite Star Wars scenes ever. For yes. sure. What do you guys think? I mean, that was crazy. That's how Vader should look when he's fighting. I mean... I know me and Griff were always playing Battlefront, and like we, you play as Vader, and you know you're killing all these guys, like you know choking them out while you're and he flashing the others down. Yeah. It was yeah. literally like a Battlefront scene because he just he walks through the corridor and he's just like deflecting all their bullets with the saber, and then he just chokes them out. Yeah. Like, it was just so satisfying, and I like how like how uh, when they had the plans, they were like passing them like one person to the other, and so yeah. just like slicing through them. That was awesome. Yeah, I think um, it kind of gave me uh, some vibes of uh, Stranger Things, uh, like this, uh, the Netflix series. Yeah, because yeah, uh, yeah. like it was like in that dark room with like the flickering lights. It kind of reminded mm -hmm. me of like mm -hmm. uh, like when they were in the Upside Down in that show, yeah. and they were like Vader kind of reminded mm -hmm. me of the monster. That <laughs> yeah, like, right yeah. Through it. yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought I thought it was just an awesome scene, and I'm sure uh, that was all Gareth Edwards in there because okay. like he made Godzilla. I'm sure he he's like tried to make it sort of like a thriller horror uh, vibes in there. And it, that's how we've wanted to see Vader for yeah, so long. Definitely. We've never really got to so see awesome. him like in action before. Yeah, you know? yeah, not on the big screen like that. I mean, we've definitely seen, like, we know uh, if you watch some of the cartoons and yeah. stuff, I mean, it shows it, but we've never really seen him 
on the big screen like that. Yeah, I mean, just like yeah, killing like every those guys had no. I like how they didn't show him yeah. walk through the door either. Like you like heard him, like you knew he was in there, and yeah. then like once that. Once his lightsaber turned on, he was just like there. You, <laughs> you hear the breathing, you're like, oh my yeah. god. You're like, oh, and no, 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 like no. He was there. Oh, and he's, that, that one guy's just trying to get out of the room the whole time, and you know he's not going to make it. And then Vader just stabs him through the door. Oh. And then, of course, after that, the, uh, the rebel ship takes off, and you see Vader standing there, and we know exactly what happens after that. Oh, yeah. um, and... If you're wondering about the sequel to Rogue One, it's uh, A New Hope. So. Yeah, <laughs> we'll go watch the <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm sure uh, that's going to be great to watch now, Rogue One, than the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. I think that'll be um, much better than watching the prequels in the original trilogy. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, uh, uh, we talked about Vader for a while, so there were a lot of other cameos besides Vader. Uh, which cameo was your guys' favorite? Okay, I think we would probably all come into agreement, but definitely... Um... When they were on Jeddah, and they were kind of passing through like the war torn the war torn areas, and they bumped into the two characters from Episode Four, Walrus Man and uh, it's like Doctor Evazan or yes. something like that. Yeah, the two characters that Obi Wan eventually chopped off on their hands, and that was like really satisfying to me. I don't know. What do you guys think? I loved it. It was my favorite, too. Uh, it's just the right amount of fan service. Yeah. Where it's not like beating you over the uh-huh. head with Star Wars references. It's just like, hey, if you love Episode Four, we'll throw in this little nugget for you. And yeah. You'll love it. And I, I just thought it, it was perfect. It made so much sense that he would be there um, because uh, he says, like, he has the death sentence on 12 systems, so... This is probably one of the 12 systems where he has the death sentence, yeah. and I'm sure they must have made it off before it all went to shit, but I, I love that. I love <laughs> yeah, that. we don't know how yeah, they survived, about, but I was thinking about they that. did. Yeah. They probably just got off real quick. <laughs> yeah, um, Yeah, I definitely, that was a good one. Um, just, it, I love when, you know, they put little things in that for the fans who really pay attention. But I think my uh, favorite cameo, other than Vader, was just seeing uh, R2-D2 and CP3O and that Rebel yeah. base. Yeah. Uh, when I was just watching it and I heard his voice, it was just such like the nostalgia fact that it just hitting you in the face, and I think that that had to be my favorite. I think like if like if there's one that you just have to have, it's R two D two and C three PO because yeah. Anthony Daniels has like been in every Star Wars movie, and like <laughs> I'd like to see them just like throw in a little yeah. cameo like and that. And it may, it, may act, it actually made sense that they were in this. Yeah, because of course they'll be at the Rebel base. Yeah, like the prequels, they didn't have to be in there. But yeah. I think in this movie it actually made sense why they would be there. So that worked out. And then my other favorite cameo is definitely Tarkin. For yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know about the animation. I didn't, like, It bothered me at first, but then I just was like, alright, I'll get over it, whatever. But I think it was awesome how they brought it back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, I also really liked um, that how much of Tarkin was in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know that he was going to be like that central of a figure. Yeah. Um, but I like the interactions with him and uh, director Krennic. Um, I like that they were sort of competing for control over the Death Star, and then in the end, Tarkin pretty much killed him uh, mm-hmm. when he like blew up the whole base where mm-hmm. um, Krennic was. So, I I think the animation was not good enough um, for this movie, but it didn't like take me out of it for the whole yeah. for the whole thing. I saw it and I was like, okay, that's a very bold choice of them to have animated and they used it a lot man like mm-hmm. he was in there a lot yeah no he was in there for like yeah like maybe 15 minutes of the yeah. movie but it does get me excited because this is like the best like human animation that i've ever seen and it i don't know how long it'll be but probably not that long before like it's perfect we can't even tell the difference yeah i didn't so. really mind leia as much as i minded tarkin i feel like i noticed it more with tarkin I don't yeah know what it was. yeah i mean because Leia was... Leia's not hard to do. for, like, a like, quick... Yeah, quick second. Yeah. With Tarkin, you gotta add all of his wrinkles and stuff. It's kind of hard. Yeah. yeah. What do you I think mean, I think that was the best that... That was the best option for them to do. Yeah. I mean, they obviously couldn't bring back the old actors. Mm-hmm. And I would have been probably more mad if they tried to put lookalikes in there. Oh, yeah. Um, so mad. So, I think that was definitely the best that they could do. Yeah. Uh, it didn't take me out of the experience, like you said. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I was fine with it. They had, like, the lookalike in... Um, what was that, in uh, Revenge of the Sith, like, real quickly, uh, when they were showing the construction of the Death Star at the end, they had some guy as Tarkin, but, like, that definitely wouldn't have been good enough because he doesn't look no. as good. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But I, I think it was a bold choice, and uh, hopefully they can continue to improve upon that, uh, on that animation. I don't think I would have minded if, like, they just showed him, like, giving commands, and they kind of just, like, you saw him from, like, behind. So, like, everyone would know it was him, but, like, they really wouldn't show his face. But, like, I still was totally okay with this, so. I'm glad they did it. Yeah. Well, they had, like, a lookalike for uh, Mon Mothma, and I think that worked out fine. Yeah, that um, was fine. I don't really... She was, like, actually in a uh, deleted scene from Revenge of the Sith, like, that actress. But, really? Like, so that's cool. I think that, like, uh-huh. she now gets a chance to be in the movie. Yeah. Um, since she was cut from the other one. Plus, she's older now, so they kind of can, like, get away with it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know <coughs> if Mon is, like, a title or if that's her first name. I've never known that. Um, they might I think it's a title. That. I'm not sure, though. I thought so, but, like, I, I thought I heard someone say, like, someone just called her Mon or something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they could still be a title. I, that's always confused me. All right, so uh, of all the new characters, which one was your favorite? Hmm. It's hard. You want me to start it off? Like yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, yeah. All right, so I think my favorite was, uh, I'm not going to say K2SO just because I, I know a lot of people say K2SO. I want to go with a different pick. I liked uh, Chirrut Imwe the most, I think, which was uh, Donnie Yen's character. Um, I just think that um, it was great that he like wasn't a jedi but still like trusted in the force and used that to uh use that in combat and sure. uh i think it's cool that the force like guided him uh because like he's blind and i thought like he had like good like humorous moments uh where they put the bag over his head and he's like are you kidding me yeah, i'm blind, I'm blind. <laughs> yeah and uh i like the um like the chemistry he had with um with Baze malbus uh like they were sort of very different characters but they like had such trust in each other, so I thought that was a good, like, dynamic they had there, so I really appreciated uh, Donnie Yen's character, and I thought, like you said, his death mm-hmm. was... His death was so very satisfying. satisfying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I had to pick, honestly, it'd be the same. Really? Yeah, yeah he did, for sure. He was my favorite character in the whole movie, and I like how they showed that, like, even though if you're not a Jedi, you can still, like, feel the Force. Yeah. Because, like, he felt it around him, which is really cool, because that's how it should be, like... And the prequels, like, bullshit, I hate yeah. the Metachlorian crap. Like, that makes no sense. Like, in episode four, like, or episode five, I think Yoda said that you can feel the force, like, everyone can feel yeah, it. So I like how they showed all that. Things, yeah. yeah. I like how they showed it, how you could, like, feel it. And they show, like, the force as, like, a religion, too. Like, yeah. Because, like... He, like, prayed to it, which was cool. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. like, Han says, like, hokey religions and, like, laser mm-hmm. swords aren't gonna, are not gonna save me, I'll take a blaster, yeah. or something like that. Um, so, like, they actually showed, like, the religious aspects of it. What do you think? Who's your favorite character? Um, I mean, probably it's hard to pick out of the those two. I mean, same with you. And then, I mean, those two are just such like a dynamic duo. I think I would have to go like both of them as my favorite. Okay. Really, it's kind of hard to like set, like pick them apart. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I like you said. I definitely like how they kind of very different. Like one just had like a stick and he trusted the force. The you know, other one had a huge blaster. Yeah. Um. That he walked around with, and it was just. I think they were my favorite was because at the end when he died and his friend, he like, he trusted the force finally yeah. and then showing him just, you he know, just take vengeance his, for his uh, friend. He yeah. Pumping that shock. That yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say, I mean, I know it's favorite character, but I would say those two. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> together. That's, that's, fair. that's fair. And then I guess since none of us picked K2SO, uh, I just wanted to say quickly, I think a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of love for K2SO, and then there's a lot of people who are saying, oh, he's just the comic relief, but I don't think that's true at all. No. Um, I think, like, while, yeah, he is, like, programmed for the rebellion, I think um, that, like, especially the scene where he dies is, like, really special because, like, he pretty much sacrificed himself for the rebellion, and um, I think that he had a great um, dynamic with Jin Erso, um, mm-hmm where I love the scene where she shot the one droid that looked yeah. just like him, and he's like, did you know that wasn't me? <laughs> yeah. like, I, I don't know if I, she might have just been shooting him. But, um, but yeah, I, I did really like K2SO. I think there was more depth to him than people give him credit for. And then Cassian Andor, we actually haven't talked about him at all yet. I thought that he had probably the most depth of any of the characters. Um, he was like uh, the, played by Diego Luna, I think, because uh, he was really struggling with... Uh, like what they were, what uh, his orders were, yeah. and like mm-hmm. if uh, he was doing the right thing by staying with the rebellion, which is interesting to see that because then Bodhi Rook, uh, played by Riz Ahmed, was kind of 
the same thing, but with the Empire, and he eventually defected from the Empire. So. Yeah, I was just going to say that he's yeah. probably my second second best in the, in the movie. Okay. I grew to like him more and more, because at first he was just kind of like a character that was thrown in there, but then like as the story went on, he had more depth, and his depth was pretty good, too. Yeah. And we didn't talk about um, Galen Urso yet. What do we think of uh, Mads Mikkelsen? <coughs> um, I thought he was as good as he could be. Yeah. You know? He, he didn't have too much to do, but yeah, I think I mean, all the scenes he was in, he was really good. And I love how they finally explained why there's a giant reactor in the middle of the Death Star. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 you know sure. what I mean? Like, that, that has been sense, such probably. a punchline of every yeah. Star Wars joke for years now and they finally uh, made it away so it seems reasonable that they would that they would implement that in the yeah. Death Star. There's so. like the, the family guy joke where it's like, uh, and we're sure the whole thing is sound, right? There's no uh, issues with the Death Star. And then this, this one like little uh, Imperial officer guy is like, uh, uh, there is just one minor problem. There's this tiny hole and if you shoot into it, the whole thing blows up. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they cleared it up that um, he rigged it uh, for that purpose and that he knew that they were going to complete it without him anyways, so he did what he could to make sure that uh, it it uh, was destroyed. And he's kind of a tragic character because like, while he's partially responsible for the death of Alderaan, mm -hmm. uh, we can see that um, he didn't want any part of that and he did everything he could to have it um, destroyed, so I mm -hmm. thought that was special. And... Uh, Jin or so, uh, we haven't really talked about her at all. Um, do do we like Jin or so? What are what are our thoughts? Um, I liked her. I mean, she wasn't one of my favorite characters, but I thought she was like she was really she played her role really well. Yeah, you know, kind of like that rebellious like criminal. Yeah, and she ended up like joining the rebellion. I thought it was really cool. I liked her. I I just didn't. I think of all the new characters, she probably had like the least amount of depth to her character. Yeah, kind of one note, but like it was, like good performance. There just wasn't like. A whole lot of different like layers to her character. Mm -hmm. I thought I still enjoyed watching her though. Like, yeah, there yeah. wasn't ever a time where I was like, "Let's switch the scene," you know. Yeah, yeah. there wasn't like anyone who like took mm -hmm. me out of the movie. Definitely a good performance, but I think she was just kind of like the driving factor of the movie, yeah. and she they just kind of set up her backstory um, right at the beginning, and then they didn't really touch on it again for the rest of it. So I mean, there's nothing to complain about, but definitely not my favorite character in the movie. I want to know more about her background. Yeah, because they yeah. say like she trained with. Um, Saw Guerrera for like, like yeah. all those years. And she was in some kind of warfare because yeah. he said that she was a so he said she was a soldier till she was sixteen. So I want to know more about that. You know, it it'd be interesting if they show some of that in Rebels because uh, Saw Guerrera is going to be like in Rebels when they come back um, after like their hiatus. he fought in the Clone Wars, right? That's yeah, he was in like yeah. he was in like one um, one story arc in the Clone Wars TV series. It was like four episodes, and uh, it was like him in a small group of like rebels on a separatist planet and they were actually trained by like anakin and ahsoka yeah, to they, like overthrow yeah. like their separatist government and so that's Tarkin probably how he got his start as like a as a um, like rebellious leader yeah. like separate from the main rebellion because tarkin and vader fought the clone wars clone wars together too which is really cool yeah that was i i yeah. love that like because there were a lot of clone wars cameos that i thought didn't mm -hmm. work but I thought the Tarkin one was uh, yeah it was great. I like how he calls him like my friend and like Vader just like doesn't like he's like the only one who could say it yeah Vader doesn't mind it yeah. Okay, any additional thoughts before we get mm -hmm. to our uh, scores of the movie? Anything else? I don't think so. I mean, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Awesome movie. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you haven't seen it and you're watching this far, you probably yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, what are you doing? Thing, yeah. <laughs> <Nice job. laughs> So, uh, actually, before we score, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna ask you guys to rank it among the other, um, Star Wars movies. So, okay. I'll, I guess I'll go first, and I'll say, after, after a lot of thought, I think I'm gonna put it right after the first three movies. I think I like it a little bit better than Force Awakens. Um, I'd need to see it some more, but I'm gonna go Empire, uh, New Hope, Jedi, and then Rogue One, and then just behind Rogue One, Force Awakens, and then the shit after that. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard for me to, you know, put it in compared with the other Star Wars movies because like I said, it really like, it doesn't even have to be a Star Wars movie, you know, if you know uh, what I'm saying. But if I had to rank them against the other one, I think I would put it uh, beneath Episode 7. I think I liked it okay. better. 
Really? Um, obviously above the prequels, um, and then the original trilogy is still top three, but I think I would put it uh, right behind episode seven. Yeah. I'd probably say something similar, except my original trilogy, I like Jedi. I don't know why I'm the only one who likes Jedi. Like There's Jedi. a lot of people, though. I like, like Jedi. Jedi, Empire, New Hope. And it comes close between Rogue One and Seven. But I think I'd probably still put Seven first, just because of the nostalgia factor. Yeah, Seven was like, as far as like bringing us back into the universe, it was yeah. perfect. It did it. And, and it was like, yeah. it, it was after so many years. Because yeah. the prequels were sucked, so like... No one really knew what was going to happen, and like it did it justice. So like I really like Seven. Yeah, initially I thought I liked Seven better, but I just think like Rogue One's like a better movie, and it's like a a more like fresh story. I think Rogue One's a better movie, but like Star Wars wise, I, I feel like I still like Seven. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, I definitely understand that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so now we're going to give our official scores of uh, Rogue One out of ten. So just closing thoughts from each of you, and then give us your score out of ten. Griffin, you want to go first? Uh, well, thanks for having me, as always. Um, but if I thought this movie was great, I thought it did Star Wars like a great justice. I would say because it was like the only Star Wars movie that was like different from the others. It didn't really have like as much Force stuff, and it was more warfare. So that's what I really liked about it overall. Rating, I'd say movie wise, probably an eight out of ten. If I had to rate it like Star Wars wise, I'd probably say nine point five. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, really yeah. high. Yeah. Eric, um, I mean, for me, uh, gave us that Vader scene that we've always been waiting for. It gives great space battles. I mean, new characters that we all liked. Um, I would say just overall, I'd probably give it about an eight for the movie. Mm-hmm. I really liked it. Uh, probably about uh, about the same for the Star Wars. It's a nice yeah. uh, change of pace. For you know all the Star Wars movies, so I really liked it. And with me, like the original trilogy are all tens, so like yeah, same. Yeah. yeah, I mean those are my top three movies. Yeah, pretty those much. are all tens to me. So yeah, so I'm gonna give this. Well, actually, I'll, I'll say my closing thoughts first. I'll say uh, I thought that um, it kept the pacing. Uh, even though some people complained, I thought it was great. It kept me interested with the world building and the introductions of the characters. I thought were smooth and uh, organic. And I just think that this is a necessary movie um, in the Star Wars galaxy. It's something different, and it gave us new characters, um, but told us a story that we were somewhat familiar with. And um, I just think that it's so great for the last 45 minutes, and then the last five minutes are even better. So it's up there with one of my favorite Star Wars movies now, and I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. And as I just said, uh, I think it's a, it was a necessary movie, um, and I think part of the reason it's necessary is that it has shown us uh, that these anthology movies can be great. So before we go away, I had a question for you guys. Is there any ideas that you have for an anthology movie that you really want to see that you think that hasn't been announced yet that you have idea that you want to see them make a Star Wars movie on? Um only thing that would come to my mind, I thought it would be, I think it would be sweet if they kind of took a route of Rogue One, kind of like a war movie, um, and really did, I don't know, like hone in on one of the, um, you know, true, one of the groups in the Clone Wars, you know, just maybe like a, and then at the very end of the movie, it kind of ends with Order uh, 66, and I, I think that would be really cool to see like a real, like, war movie. In yeah, the Star Wars right. and, yeah, yeah, like really, style. yeah, really huge battles like that, so I mean, I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah, I haven't heard that before. I love that idea, though, because I think that they're kind of afraid to touch the prequel era, but mm-hmm. I think that if they do something like that, that could be great, and mm-hmm. especially ending with, like, Order 66. Yeah. I think it would be um, awesome to see, like, it end um, with something, like, so tragic like that. Right so, before yeah. they gave the order, because everyone yeah. knows what happened. And the cool. whole movie kind of build up to how they're, like, you know, they're following orders, but they're not really, like, they're kind of on the fence. And at yeah. the end, when that final Order 66 comes in... Um, I mean, they're just like, they obviously won't go through with it, so, yeah. I mean, I think that would be a really cool, like, dynamic. And we didn't really see. see much of, like, the actual warfare. We saw more of, like, the Jedis within and how, mm-hmm. like, they tied into it, but, like, I think it'd be cool just to see, like, people in the warfare, you yeah. know, like, non, non-Jedi. non That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right, well, uh, Kathleen Kennedy, president of Lucasfilm, if you're <clears> listening, <throat> uh, Eric Thomas just gave an incredible idea for a Star there Wars movie, so... Yeah. 
Uh, maybe uh, you get, hire him as a writer slash consultant, uh, or you could just steal our idea. That's probably <laughs> what you'll do. Um, did you have any ideas for? Um, I guess. I mean, I had this one idea. I I would like to see. We haven't seen the other movies that are going to come out after episode seven yet. Yeah. But I want to know more about the Knights of Ren. Okay. And I would like to see their backstory and like what they did exactly. We don't really know much about them. So yeah. if they made a movie about the Knights, I think it would be awesome. Yeah, I think there's a lot of story they could tell in between episode six and seven. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll probably be until after episode nine before they get to any of that. But um, that would be really interesting to see. Mm -hmm. And then the biggest one that's going around, everyone wants an Obi-Wan movie because like Ewan McGregor's the, the right age. That'd be cool, um, yeah. Uh, like to do like in between three and four, I I think that it's something I'd like to see. Um, I know they're gonna start exploring Obi Wan and Rebels probably, so I'm I'm worried that they're gonna kind of take the story that I'd want to see and put it in Rebels um, instead of in a movie. But I'd also just like to see something uh, Old Republic, um, like because the prequels I think could have been great, yeah. but they just kind of botched it. And I think like politics and Star Wars. Like, politics doesn't have to be boring in a movie, um, they could, yeah. but it was boring in the prequels. Yeah, yeah. And if it's something like Game of Thrones politics in the Star Wars yeah, galaxy, that'd be, awesome. that'd be incredible. Like, like yeah. way before, like, the prequels. Like, well, I'd like to yeah, see, like, so. them do something with, like, Yoda. Yeah, I mean, there's really so many young. great characters, just, honestly, in yeah. the prequels that, like, they yeah. could do a lot yeah. with Yoda it. had they so many have have wands, I think it would be it. awesome to, like, see, like, who he trained. Like, I know, he, like, he trained Dooku, and, like, Dooku, like, went bad on him. So, yeah. like, I think it'd be cool to, like, see that. Or even like the Emperor. Oh, that would be When he yeah, was trained. That'd be yeah. awesome. All right. Well, uh, that's all we're going to have uh, for our Rogue One review. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the show, uh, the viewers. And thank you very much to Eric and Griffin. I think this yep. was well, a great show. Us. And uh, we will be going on break for two weeks. So we'll be back in January. And our next episode will be the top 10 movies of 2016. We'll have. Uh, a couple guests on and we'll all give our lists of top 10 movies so thank you for watching and uh we'll be back and just remember uh you're one with the force and the force is with you